Hello, this is Lino Tadros, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade a Sitefinity site from an older version to a newer version using the Sitefinity CLI. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have this site in here. As you can see at the bottom, it says Sitefinity CMS 13.3, so it's an older version of Sitefinity. And I just created a home page. The home page doesn't have much. It just says, welcome to Sitefinity. That's about it. And what I would like to do right now is to go ahead and upgrade the site to uh, currently the latest 14.38022. By the time you see the video, probably there will be other newer version, which will probably be the same exact way to upgrade them as well. So let me close this down and I'd like to go to Visual Studio. This is where I created my project. So this is the 13.3 project. The name of the project is SF Upgrade Site. Of course, you could have called it anything you want. And at this point, I'm just going to go in here, right click and say, show me that in the file explorer. And from the file explorer, I'm going to right click and say, open in the terminal. I usually don't like to open terminal right away, just because it will open up inside of here in the command line inside of Visual Studio. And I want it to be a full size window in here. Sounds good. All right, so let's go ahead and start. The first thing I'm going to recommend to you is to shut down Visual Studio. Actually, the process itself will start an instance of Visual Studio for you to do the upgrade. So I'm going to close this guy down as well. And now we only have the command line running. Uh, in another video in the library, you can take a look at how to install the Sitefinity CLI from GitHub, uh, how to download it, how to install it on your machine, how to put it on your path. Uh, so that's a different video. Just to make sure that you have everything running correctly from inside of this directory where I have actually this website installed. If you just put SF in here and push enter, if you get an error, you do not have it on the path or you do not have the CLI installed correctly on your machine. You should see something like this. And the three different commands that you can pass to SF, which is the command line, is add, uh, config, and upgrade as well. So if you would like to get some more information about the upgrade, just go ahead and say SF upgrade, upgrade, and we'll put a dash H for help. And then we'll give you a little bit more information. And this is good information, actually. So there are options and there are arguments. Be very careful what you're reading here in the arguments. It takes two, the solution path, not the solution file. Be careful with that. And then the version number that you'd like to upgrade to. There are other things that you can actually do like skip prompts and accept licenses. And these are great things if you're gonna be running this from let's say Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions or Jenkins and you do not want to actually babysit the upgrade. You just want to actually issue a pipeline to do it for you. You don't want the system to stop and ask you push yes or no to accept. You don't want that. So sometimes it's important to pass these skip prompts and accept licenses as well. You can also add additional packages. You can do whatever you want in here. It's very, very powerful as well. The one thing I want to actually make sure everybody is aware of when you say SF upgrade, because I'm inside of the same folder, you might actually find it in your heart to actually just go ahead and put the name of the solution. And by the way, it has to be the solution, not the project file. So I'm going to say SF upgrade like this push tab. And that is the project. That's the incorrect one. Let's skip, uh, skip a couple of files. And there it is. That is the SF upgrade site dot solution that's available in this folder. And then you will put a space in there and you'll say 14.3. I think right now it's 8022. It could be a later one by the time you see the video. And now you'll push enter and it will work for a minute or so and then you will fail and you will wonder why it failed. Remember the argument here is called solution path, not the solution file. So you'll have to go back and don't forget this part. Even though you are in the correct folder, I find that you have to say e colon backslash sf upgrade site backslash and then the solution file you have to put the full pass on your hard drive whether it's c d or e whatever letter you have and then go ahead and run it from there very very important okay and now when you push enter right now it will ask you if you have in source control yet just to make sure nothing goes wrong we'll say yes go for it we'll push enter after the yes and then be patient this one actually takes longer than upgrading using the project manager or the NuGet packages inside Finity. The validations are very, very heavy on the CLI and it does an excellent job. This is my preferred way of upgrading Sitefinity sites, more of course than the project manager or anything else. So notice right now it will make sure that you have actually access to the Sitefinity NuGet packages. If you did not add that previously to your Visual Studio, um, you will get an error. It will not find out where to get the NuGet packages for Sitefinity. But I already added that to my package sources so it will continue. You, you will notice it's downloading uh, packages for everything for uh, the 14.3 
8022 and then you will notice it's going to start running some ps1 files which are the powershell uh, needed to uh, make changes to the config file to other files adding things and so on and so forth because i didn't pass any of these dash dash accept license or whatever you'll get to the point where it says do you want to accept the terms and condition i'm going to say yes but remember you do not have to to do it this way you can just pass that on the command line and it will not bug you during the run but i did it here so you can see it as well notice visual studio in the back just got uh, opened and it will open up the uh, the, uh, the, the, the the project for 13.3 and notice what's going to happen here at the bottom the package manager in visual studio will stop uh, will start upgrading everything from 13.3 to 14.3.8022 so this will take several minutes okay so i'm going to stop the video i will come back here maybe in a minute or two to show you how far did we go with the installation the important thing is that you don't need to touch anything just leave it alone it does take several minutes uh, it took me about maybe five and a half to six minutes to upgrade the site so be patient with it but it's bulletproof and it works very very well i'll see you again in a few seconds all right let me on the recorder again notice this opened up here for the package manager console and it says waiting and you'll start showing that all the new get packages are starting now to get upgraded into the project itself a few seconds later you'll notice it keeps going you'll have to be patient with this one it's, there will be some ps1 files for powershell that we have to execute and a lot of other things but uh, if it stays up the word waiting for more than 30 seconds don't panic that's normal um, and it will finish up and it will do a pretty good job hopefully for you as well as you can see right now it's removing the old packages for 13.3 it's going really fast now and then it's going to be replacing that with the 14.3 notice also that visual studio did not start uh, by my command actually the updater is the one that started an instance of visual studio so when this all finishes the Visual Studio instance will close as well and then the command line will tell you that everything was successful. So yes, don't worry about Visual Studio as long as it's installed on your machine. It will start and shut down during the upgrade by itself as well. All right, so far it has been almost seven minutes uh, since I stopped the recording and now all the removal have taken place and now the installation of the new packages for 14.3 are taking place and also more um, PS1 files, which is the PowerShell scripts are running, as you can see in here, for the core version of 14.3. We'll give it a little bit more time and I'll be back as soon as it gets closer to finishing everything. All right, as you can see at this point, the upgrade uh, uh, shutdown Visual Studio upgrade was successful and now it's synchronizing the packages and we are a few seconds away from uh, completion with success that the upgrade happened in 14.3 and voila so the whole thing actually took about nine minutes believe it or not uh, so nine minutes and it's closing visual studio instance everything was successful so the only way for me to find out if this really worked or not is to open up visual studio and run the project and see if it is a 14.3 uh, still let's go ahead and do that we'll go to visual studio click on the solution in here and I don't need to do anything, just go ahead and run it. And hopefully, by the way, running it, you should actually get two problems now, right? Because this is 14.3 and the license that I had was 13.3. So the first problem is that the system will probably not allow you to, to run this until you upgrade the license. And even when you do that, the database did not actually get upgraded yet. I only upgraded the folders, the assemblies and the references and the file system, but the database did not get upgraded. The database will get upgraded on the first hit after the upgrade. So let's go ahead and run it and see what will happen when I do that. So notice on first run, I just said uh, run this in IS Express. It found out that the file system doesn't match the same version of this database. So the first thing it's going to do is upgrading the database to 14.3.8022. And again, that will not take a long time. There is not a lot of big differences between 13.3 and 14.3. But if you're coming in from a very earlier one, that might take a little bit of time. There is a lot of work to be done to upgrade the database and so on. So also be patient with it. Hopefully within the next couple of minutes, it will come and says, go to site. It was successful. Uh, but we still need to upgrade the license. So I'll come back once this is done. Hey, all right, success. Upgraded to Sifinity 14.3.8.0.2.2. That means our database and the file system are now both ready to go. We'll say go to the site and I will see if it will complain about the license. So we'll give it a second in here and we should see, oh yeah, it did not like the license. 
So I already have a 14.3 license. Let's click on that. We'll say choose a file. And I'm going to go to the download. It should be here somewhere. Pretty close. Ah, there it is. And I'm going to go ahead and activate that license. And from that point on, once you say OK here at the bottom, continue, you should be in good shape. And your site will say at the bottom, this is 14.3 and everything will uh, will work well. well. We'll give it another second here so we can actually confirm that the bottom footer of the back end says 14.3. Uh, let's go ahead and go to slash sitefinity and the back end hopefully will tell us. <laughs> And voila, the dashboard is loading. And if we go all the way to the bottom, yes, we are on Sitefinity CMS 14.3. And as you can see, the upgrade was successful. And uh, as long as you give it a little bit of patience and give it maybe 10 minutes of your time, it is a bulletproof and it's a much better way of upgrading than using the project manager or something like that. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you again in another uh, video on Lino TV soon. Thank you.